Now, today's topic is Model Reference Adaptive Control. I covered this topic in two videos. One video here, you can search on, the, uh, on my YouTube page or in general in YouTube. This is a short overview which focuses about uh, motivation and general principles. So to get motivated, watch this video. If you want a really in-depth analysis, a lecture, a long lecture, but a detailed lecture about model reference adaptive control fundamentals, watch this video that I posted before. Today's video will be um, general principles about model reference adaptive control. Also, you can go to Google Scholar, search for this overview article. Here, I basically overview, I provide an in-depth overview and uh, provide general important principles about, about adaptive control. Actually, I use this article to generate this video. By the way, if you on Google Scholar for some reason, publish, uh, publication date of this article is 1999. So it is actually published in 2019. All right. Let's start with the general principles behind model reference adaptive control. First of all, adaptive control deals with uncertain dynamical systems. Here, consider the nonlinear uncertain dynamical system. X is the state vector, U is the control input, A is a known system matrix, B is a known input matrix, and here delta is a matched uncertainty. The reason we say it is matched because you can write it like this. Um, as a general assumption, I assume the known pair A and B, they are controllable. And I am parameterizing the uncertainty like this. B is a known basis, beta is a known basis function, and W is an unknown constant weight matrix. Once again, in this video and in this paper, you can find the motivation behind this uncertainty parameterization. All right, before we start adaptive control, we would like to design a nominal control, right? Because we know something about the system. We know A and B matrices. So I would like to form a control signal like the nominal control signal plus the adaptive control signal. Nominal control signal will deal with, um, you know, try to regulate the system based on the known information and adaptive control signal would like to cancel the effect of system uncertainties, the matched uncertainty. For the sake of nominal control design, I am assuming, you know, there is no uncertainty because nominal control performance is the performance that you want to achieve when there is no uncertainty. So in this case, you don't need an adaptive control signal. So control signal will be only composed of the nominal control signal. So we are looking at this open loop system without the uncertainty for now. Without loss of generality, I am assuming the nominal control has this form. Feed back part, feed forward part. X is the measurable state, R is the reference that we would like to track. On the selection of K1 and K2 matrices, I would like to refer to this video on, the, uh, on my YouTube channel. So it covers all the details about how you should choose K1 and K2 for state feedback and output feedback. Here I am doing state feedback since I am assuming X is measurable and I am using this particular form and uh, with small changes, you can use the other control architectures that is mentioned on this video as the nominal controller. Anyway, so we have this system we have this nominal controller so let's write the x dot dynamics now i am inserting un like this and then i am grouping terms that depends on x and then depends on r am i am going to give this am in order to in order not to write a minus b k1 for the rest of the video and this is the bm K1 should be selected using pole placement or linear quadratic regulator to make AM Hurwitz. 
And if this Hurwitz then it satisfies for a given positive definite R, this Lyapunov equation. And um, if you want me to cover Lyapunov equations or ball placement, linear quadratic regulator, let me know. I will, I will be happy to do so. So when there is no uncertainty, basically this, which is coming from here, captures the desire, the ideal behavior of the closed loop system. And for this reason, you know, in the presence of uncertainty, system response will get worse. So we eventually, we would like to design an adaptive controller such that we would like to recover this ideal desired closed loop system behavior. For this reason, we are choosing the reference model like this. Exactly kept, you know, copying this dynamics. So in some sense, model reference adaptive control is a supervised learning and your supervisor is this reference model. And you need to generate the adaptive control signal such that you asymptotically converge to this reference model. To capture this asymptotic convergence, we form this error signal, which is the difference between X, the actual system and the reference model. If no uncertainty, basically E dot is X dot minus X M dot. You can insert X dot here or here, minus X M dot, which is here. So you have E dot equals to E M error. Solution to this system basically is zero, meaning that if there is no uncertainty, you know, your, the, the, the distance, the difference between your reference model and the ideal system is zero. But of course, you know, this is how we design the reference model. In reality, you have uncertainty and we are going to use this reference model as a supervisor such that we would like to minimize this error when you have uncertainty in the system. So overview wise, here is your nominal control signal. Res let's remember U is UN plus UAD, nominal control plus UAD. And here is your nominal control signal. Here is your reference model. Now on the selection of the adaptive control signal, remember the uncertainty parameterization, W transpose unknown by the known basis function. Well, since this is unknown, let's estimate it, right? So, now, the augmented control signal becomes U equals to UN plus UAD. I apologize for the mistake. I mean, so I initially wrote U equals to UN plus UAD. It should be U equals to UN minus UAD. Here is the adaptive control signal. Here is your nominal control signal minus adaptive control signal. Nominal control signal minus adaptive control signal is so now let's write the actual error dynamics. We would like to minimize the difference between X and the ideal reference model state, XM. Let's compute AE dot dynamics. So X dot minus XM dot, X dot is this. Now has the adaptive control signal matched uncertainty, minus XM dot, which is here, your reference model. Now, after grouping terms and rearranging, you have this structure. Remember, we called this as AM. This is BM for simplicity of this discussion. Also, you know, BMR and here, this term will cancel out with each other. So you have AM plus B, UAD and the uncertainty. UAD would like to cancel the effect of this uncertainty. And this was the UAD minus the uncertainty. So you can write this like this. So now parameter estimation error, unknown parameter and its estimate is estimation. Let's call it W tilde. So you can write the E dot dynamics like this. 
am is her width multiplied by the error. And here is the parameter estimation error. Now the question is how we should choose the weight update law to drive system error asymptotically to zero. Well, w hat dot, so it w hat to estimate w hat, we are going to we are going to need a ordinary differential equation. So w hat dot will be gamma multiplied by some function. What should be that function? So here gamma is the adaptation rate. Uh, think this as a scalar, it can be matrix. It needs to be positive definite if it is a matrix. So if gamma is small, we are going to adapt slow. If gamma is large, we are going to adapt fast. In a faster way, we cancel the effect of the uncertainties. But, so this is kind of a, I introduced this as an additional design parameter. The main idea, the main question is, okay, what should be FAD? Adaptive controls function. All right, so let's remember now error dynamics. And uh, let's have W tilde dot, which is W hat dot minus W dot. W dot is constant. So we have gamma multiplied by that function coming from the previous slide. On the derivation of the weight update law, consider this Lyapunov function. And let's take its time derivative. It is time derivative along the trajectories of E dot and W tilde dot is like this, E dot and W tilde dot. I am going to insert these equations to here and here, like you see. From the first term, you have these terms in here. So for, for now, let's focus on the second terms. So if we expand this, the second term and the third term looking like this. So now, since basically they depend on tilde and tilde, let's write the second term as trace W tilde transpose beta E transpose PB. Of course, we have two. And we can put it inside. So basically, I put this inside the trace. And basically, if you use this, you can select FAD to be like this. If you select FAD like this, and remember, beta basis is known, error is known, P coming from the Lyapunov function, B coming from the known system matrix, then parameter basically weight update law becomes like this. So once you select FAD like this, these terms will cancel out. You end up having the, this term here. Now you can rewrite this as this. And finally, from Lyapunov equation, this equals to minus R, you end up having this, thanks to the Lyapunov equation. All right, so basically, you have this such that it is less than equal to zero. So you have Lyapunov stability. Now, the following three remarks are important. Since this Lyapunov function is lower bounded and V dot is this, then we know that V approaches a finite limit as T goes to infinity. Moreover, V dot is uniformly continuous function of time and its time derivative is also bounded. Now, if you use Barbalas lemma, it follows that V dot goes to zero. Now, when V dot goes to zero, since R is positive definite, then error goes to zero asymptotically. So this means that asymptotically, the Uncertain systems state X will approach to the desired the ideal behavior XM as a function of time. To summarize, if you want to implement, this is your uncertain system. This is your control law composed of the nominal control law and the adaptive control law. To generate W hat, here is your weight update law. Gamma is the adaptation rate. I, I encourage you to play with it. I'm going to show you a simulation example, but choose 0 0.1, 1, 10, 
see what happens. As you increase gamma, you will adapt and cancel the effect of uncertainty faster. So this will guarantee that X to approach the ideal behavior asymptotically. So supervised learning uh, will do the job. For example, I am going to consider in this example Winkrak dynamics. And Winkrak is a nonlinear phenomenon in which an aircraft exhibits an oscillation in roll at high angles of attack. Basically, we can capture Winkrak dynamics as a second order system shown in, shown in here. And here, delta is this uncertainty. Alphas are unknown. So you can rewrite this delta as W transpose multiplied by beta. Beta is a known uh, system basis. And in reality, we don't know alpha. And for the simulation purposes, I am going to assume that alphas are like this. You can assign any arbitrary numbers to these alphas and uh, adaptive control will recover the performance for any alpha case. All right, here x1 denotes roll angle in radians and x2 denotes roll rate in radians per second. And for the nominal controller, I am going to choose this K1 and K2. In this case, this results in a reference model that has a nat natural frequency of 0.4 radians per second and a critical damping of 0.707. So I can capture the ideal performance with this reference model dynamics. Here is the simulation result for the case when there is no uncertainty and we are not applying adaptation since there is no uncertainty. Here is the command R that we would like to track. In this case, reference model and the reference model's first state and the uh, role angle matches with each other because you don't need with adaptation, so the system behaves like ideal. This is these are the second states: roll rate uh, state and reference model roll rate state. And here is the um, control angle. When you insert uncertainty and you don't apply adaptation, you are going to see that your actual system states, which is driven also by the uncertainty, are unstable. So your actual system, close-up system performance is unstable if you don't apply adaptation. When you apply adaptation with a, I call it moderate learning rate, gamma equals to one, I always choose it to be one, then scale down or up. As you see, X1 approaches to X reference model's first state, as T goes to infinity, I would say after 50 seconds, and second state approaches to the roll rate, roll rate state approaches to the reference model's roll rate state. Um, there are some oscillations. If you run some simulation a bit further, it will approach perfectly. Here is the UN adaptive control signal and the con total, uh, total control signal. Remember, U is UN minus UAD. So the actual control signal that you inject to the system is captured by this black line. And this was the uncertainty delta, and this is its estimate, W hat transpose multiplied by beta. You are going to see that you are, you are capturing system uncertainty uh, better as time progresses. I hope this uh, gives you a good uh, introductory material about model reference adaptive control. Now, you can do several other things with model reference adaptive control. For example, if you would like to kill these oscillations everywhere, this is called transient performance recovery. Um, there are a bunch of papers here. If you want a simple approach or if you want, if you ask what should I read first, I would recommend this paper and you can then dive into details on other papers. Uh, this is about, you know, achieving better transients without oscillations. If you would like to enforce, you know, right, so basically, if you would like to achieve strict performance guarantees, uh, 
um, such that, for example, right, you have your reference model behavior and your actual system during learning. If you want this difference to be less than an epsilon bound chosen by the user, you can refer to uh, these papers here. And if you want which paper I should start first, um, I would recommend you should read first. Um, and um, if you want me to cover any of these material about transient performance recovery or enforcing performance guarantees, let me know. So um, this is all I am going to say about model reference adaptive control. I hope you will find this video helpful. And if you find it helpful, you can like it, subscribe, and we can go from there. Thank you.